My name is Joanne Hillhouse. I'm a writer for Vancouver and Barbuda. I begin with a poem called I Write. I write because it in me. I write because my spirit banging on a cage yearning to be free. I write because things just vex me and people just irk me. And I write because I worry. And not just about me, but about country and this hot ass reality, about where we be, we woman, we near the people, still on the man foot. Still like the days of massa and massa minions. I write because it's so cut, it's so wound, it's so let loose. And when my words come good, good, it's true, true utopia. I write for my people and me. I write because it's that what set me free. I write about innocence, jadedness, peace, turmoil, lack of relief, how we grieve, how we laugh. And music, we music, we culture, we pride, and we shame, and we politician, and them game. And here we are, I write celebration and tears about Obama elevation and poor people degradation. I write because it's so sing and dance and bring my art. Man, I tell you, all right? Because like sometimes they forget we bleed and have needs like burdensome tax relief. And for people do we write and we sit comfortable around this table called life. When I write, I don't want you to smile and say nice, nice. I don't want you to get vexed and rage. Fix on your battle face, sound the conch, beat the drum, remember we heritage, embrace some. I write because all the people that was come to me won't come to be and I give them power, the power of the words within me. I write because sometimes I won't cry. I write because sometimes my spirit, like it won't die. I write because the hurt bitter, like cattle tongue. I write because of the memory of he and he and she and she and this and that, the worries and the susu. I write so I can let it go. I don't write for you. I write because my muse direct me to. And she tell me right through and all the people will feel it too. So now I'm going to read from one of my books. I have a few books. One is called, the first one actually is called The Boy from Willow Bend. And there's Dancing Nude in the Moonlight. There's my children's book, Fish Out of Water. And the one I'll be reading from is Oh God. I'll be reading an excerpt having to do with a development project that's affecting the lives of farmers in a particular area of the island. When they left the valley, they were laden with most of what they needed, and Tanti had even allowed Nikki to pay this time. Her heart was heavy, though, as she worried anew about them, and at, some, at the sense of defeat she sensed, especially in Tanti. Watching them drag Sadie away in handcuffs all those months ago had clearly taken its toll. Her resolve so clearly voiced at their first meeting that the fact that they'd been farming the same plot of land for generations somehow protected them was clearly shaken. Had a time right after slavery, she said to Nikki as they sat under the blue tarpaulin, sipping lime water while Sadie helped Jazz fill their shopping list. Nigger people had put it off the plantation and then, some Tanti say, was a whole bunch of free village round the place then. But back would bond them out, make sure Nigger know them place, know them village not exist, not even in memory. There were tears in her eyes as she continued, and she seemed old, older even than she was. When money had changed hand, she said it with quiet force, and big people have flexed their muscle like a smarty not exist. Smarty come like a mosquito and clap their hand together so and out your light. And you even see the blow come. You just wait and see. Nikki jumped at Tanti's sharp clap and remained chilled by the intense quietness of her voice long after leaving the valley.